press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello everybody. So this is my second video on the skeletal system. So the human skeleton is divided into axial skeleton and the appendiclass skeleton. So in the first video we have seen, we have studied about the axial skeleton which comprises of the skull, the bones of the skull which is divided into cranial and the facial bones and the vertebral column, the bones of the vertebral column and also the sternum and the rib cage. So appendicular skeleton comprises of the various the girdles and the limbs. So the limbs we have studied yesterday, we have studied the various uh, 120 bones belonging to the four limbs, two upper arms and the two lower arms. So the two upper arms constitute for 60 bones and from two lower arms coming 60 bones, total of 120 bones in the from the limbs and the remaining bones which forms the girdles. So girdles are the one which join these the parts of the appendiclass skeleton with the main or the axial skeleton. So the limbs, the lower limbs and the upper limbs are joined to the axial skeleton with the help of these girdles. And there are two important girdles in human body. One is called as the pectoral girdle and the other is pelvic girdle and the other is pelvic girdle. So the pectoral girdle is the one which joins the upper limb or the hands, hands or upper limb to the shoulder bone, to the shoulder bone or the to the shoulders and that is with the help of the pectoral girdle and this pelvic girdle which are present in the abdomen the shoulder framework can be called as the pectoral girdle the pelvic girdle which is present in the abdomen where the lower limbs are attached to lower limbs are attached to this girdle with to the main axis of the body. So the main axis of the body, the limbs attached to the main axis of the body with the help of this uh, pelvic girdle, that is the lower limbs attached to the uh, pelvic girdle and this pelvic girdle in turn is attached to the main axis of the body. So these are girdles, the shoulder framework and the abdominal framework. Now looking into the various bones present in them. The first one is the pectoral girdle. This pectoral girdle consists of two important bones. One is called as the scapula and the other is called as the clavicle. Other is called as the clavicle. Scapula is the large triangular bone present on the dorsal side of our body in the thorax region. So it starts from the uh, third rib to the seventh rib and it is triangular in shape. So that is scapula and that scapula has got a ridge, projecting ridge which has got a spine and which continues as acromen, a flat portion on the shoulder and this acromen opens into a cavity which is called as the glenoid cavity, which is called as the glenoid cavity. So to this glenoid cavity attaches the femur of the upper limb. So to this glenoid cavity attaches the humerus, sorry not the femur, it is the humerus of the upper limb attaches to this cavity and that cavity is called as the glenoid cavity. So the scapula which projects into a spine and becomes a flat surface or flat uh, part which is called as the acromen which projects into a cavity which is called as the glenoid cavity and to this glenoid cavity is attached the humerus bone of the upper arm. So this is scapula and this scapula the acromen attaches to the clavicle. Clavicle is another bone which is also called as the collar bone which is also called as the collar bone. 
the scapula attaches with the clavicle with the help of this acromen. So this clavicle is the collar bone and the scapula is the large triangular bone present on the dorsal side of the body. So these two together open uh, forms this glenoid cavity to which the humerus bone of the upper limb attaches and the joint which is present in between uh, this uh, glenoid cavity and the humerus bone is the ball and socket joint you call which enables the movement of the shoulder or the uh, humerus bone which helps the movement of the humerus bone. So pectoral girdle comprising of two important bones the scapula and the other is called as the clavicle. The clavicle is also called as the collar bone. So they have a cavity which is called as the glenoid cavity to which the humerus bone articulates with the pectoral girdle. So that is about the pectoral girdle. Now coming to the pelvic girdle. So this girdles they are made up of two halves. So if the scapula, clavicle, scapula and capicle, clavicle are two bones present on one side of the body and on the other side also you have the scapula and the clavicle. So the entire pectoral girdle is made up of two halves. So one half containing one scapula and one cap clavicle. So two halves will make two scapula and two clavicle. So next coming to the pelvic girdle which is also made up of two halves. Which is also made up of two halves. And here the pelvic girdle is formed by a big bone which is called as the coxa. And this big coxa bone is made up of is formed by the fusion of three important bones. One is called as the ilium, ischium and pubis. So this large coxa bone of the pelvic girdle is formed by the fusion of ilium, ischium and pubis. So the two coxal bone join together to form the framework and which a framework on the ventral side of the body which is called as the pubis symphysis which is called as the pubis symphysis. So please follow my next video which consists of all the images of the bo various bones in a powerpoint presentation. Please follow that video so that you will be able to understand what is pubis symphysis, what are the bones like ilium, ischium and pubis which makes the coxal bone, what is pelvic girdle, what is pectoral girdle, all this has been clearly explained in that particular PPT along with the images. So please follow that video. So, Girdles, they are of two types, the pectoral girdle which forms the shoulder framework and the pelvic girdle which forms the abdominal framework which is formed by two bigger bones which is which are called as coxa. Each coxa is, is formed by the fusion of three tiny bones, the ilium, ischium and the pubis. So both the coxal bones join together on the ventral side to form a framework which is called as the pubis symphysis. And this pelvic uh, uh, girdle has a cavity which is called as the acetabulum. It has a cavity called as the acetabulum to which the femur bone articulates. So the to which the femur bone articulates so that the lower, gym, uh, lower limb joins with the pelvic girdle. So this is the point of attachment that is at the acetabulum the femur bone forms uh, with the help of the ball and socket joint joins the acetabulum at the point of acetabulum and thereby the lower, the lower limb uh, is attached to the pelvic girdle that is the appendages are attached to the main axis of the body with the help of these girdles. So there you have the glenoid cavity and here we have acetabulum. So both which helps in the articulation. There humerus bone attaches to the glenoid cavity, here the femur bone attaches to the acetabulum and thus forming the entire skeleton complete. So that is about the two different types of girdles, the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle. Next is there are also some other, these bones make a definite movement because of certain joints. Joints are point of attachment of two different bones. Joints. So the next topic is joints. 
So jo joints are nothing but point of attachment of two bones. You call it as joints. So these joints are of three types. The first one, the fibrous joint. The second is the cartilaginous joint. And the third is synovial joint, synovial joint. So the fibrous joint, so these fibrous joints are present in the bones of the skull. So the bones of the skull, so we have studied the various bones of the skull, the parietal, the temporal, the frontal, all these are various bones which are attached to form a single surface of the skull. So that point of attachment, there is these joints which are called as the fibrous joints. These <coughs> bones are joined with the help of fibrous joints and the point of, at the point of attachment, they form the sutures. You can, these sutures are visible to tell that two bones are joined together. These sutures are visible on the skull to tell that the two bones are joined together. So the skull, the bones of the skulls are joined with the help of the fibrous joint and the point of attachment of the two bones is called as the sutures and these fibrous joints, they are immovable joints. They are immovable joints. They do not help in any type of movement of the body. So they do not help in the movement of the body. Therefore, they are called as immovable joints. The second one is the cartilaginous joint. So these cartilaginous joints are present in between the vertebrae, in between vertebrae in the vertebral column, in between vertebrae in vertebral column. So we have already studied the vertebral column is made up of 26 serially placed tiny bones which are called as vertebrae. And each vertebrae is joined with another vertebrae with the help of these cartilaginous joints. So they are also not able to move completely but they uh, bring about the flexibility of the bones. So helps semi-movable joints, we can call them as semi-movable joints. You can call them as the semi-movable joints. So you cannot completely make a movement but you can bend your back so that you can call it as semi-movable joints. So they also do not bring about the complete movement of the body. Now coming to the synovial joints. So the characteristics of these synovial joints is they have a cavity which is called as, uh, they have a cavity which is called as the synovial cavity and it is filled by a fluid called as the synovial fluid. So this fluid uh, helps in the easy movement of the two bones. So it is something like lubrication. So this synovial fluid present at the synovial joint brings about the movement. So they are movable joints. They are movable joints. And these movable joints are of five types. These synovial joints are of five types. The first one, ball and socket joint, ball and socket joint, hinge joint, pivot joint, gliding joint, and saddle joint. So this is one of the important questions to be asked in the examination. So they will ask list out all the different types of synovial joints that may be sometimes even asked for 5 marks or they may just ask 
mention the various synovial joints and where they are present. So where are these joints present in our body? So for example, the ball and socket joint. So I have already told the humerus bone of our uh, upper limb joins to the shoulder framework that is the pectoral girdle with this ball and socket joint. So the movement of the uh, hand is, is uh, because of this ball and socket joint which is present in between the uh, pectoral girdle and the humerus bone. So where is the ball and socket joint? One example that is humerus and in between, humerus and in between, humerus and pectoral girdle. Pectoral girdle is nothing but the ball and socket joint which makes the easy movement of the humerus bone. Hinge joint that is knee joint or your elbow joint the knee joint and the elbow joint all of them the knee cap or the knee joint and the elbow joint where the humerus joins with the radius and ulna or in the uh, in the knee joint the femur joins with the tibia and fibula at that point of contact you call that as the hinge joint and the pivot joint so the pivot joint is present near the uh, in between the atlas. So atlas is the first vertebra. It is the first vertebra in the vertebral column or it is the anterior most vertebrae in the vertebral column which is called as the atlas. Atlas, atlas and skull. In between the atlas and skull you find this pivot joint. So we find this pivot joint and coming to the I shall wrap this. So the gliding joint, gliding joint, so they are present between carpals, they are present between carpals or they are present between torsals, they are present between Torsals. They are called as the gliding joint. So between the carpals, that is between the bones of the palm and between the ankle bones, these joints are present which are called as the gliding joints. And finally coming to the saddle joint. So saddle joint which is present between carpal and metacarpal. carpal and metacarpal or between torsal and metatorsal, metatorsal. So to understand joints perfectly, please watch my PPT video. The next video is a PowerPoint presentation showing all these joints and their movement. Please follow that video to understand these joints and bones better. So gliding joint, sliding uh, saddle joint. So if you see that video, you can exactly find out in where in our body these joints are present. So gliding joint which is present between the carpals, that is between the bones of the <coughs> uh, wrist bones and um, the movement of the wrist bones are brought about by the gliding joint. And the saddle joint between carpal and metacarpal of thumb, of thumb you can take, of thumb. So this is saddle joint. So gliding joint, saddle joint. So synovial joints there are of five types, ball and socket joint which is present between the humerus and the pectoral girdle and also you can take the example of uh, the pelvic girdle and the femur. Then hinge joint, they are present at the knee and elbow and the pivot joint between the skull and the atlas, the gliding joint between carpals or between thorsals, saddle joint between carpal and metacarpals of thumb. All these are examples or, or the exact place where these joints are present in our body.
So that is about the joints. So lastly, coming to the disorders of the muscular and skeletal system. Disorders. of the muscular system and also the skeletal system. The first one is myasthenia gravis. The first one is myasthenia gravis. The second is muscular dystrophy. Muscular dystrophy. The third is titani. Fourth is arthritis. Fifth is osteoporosis. And the final one is gout. First one, myasthenia gravis, muscular dystrophy and titani. All these three are the disorders which are related with the muscular system. Whereas arthritis, osteoporosis and gout are related with the skeletal system. So myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disorder. Autoimmune disorder. So this myasthenia gravis is a disease or disorder which is called as autoimmune disorder. What do you understand by this word autoimmune disorder? So our own immune system prevents or makes certain proteins func functionless, makes some of the proteins functionless and thus by, thereby causing the disorder, you call it as autoimmune disorder. So our own antibodies will block the acetylcholine, acetylcholine. So acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. So our own antibodies will prevent acetylcholine on uh, attaching itself to the postsynaptic neuromuscular junction. So this is a disease which is uh, concerned with the neuromuscular junction, thereby bringing about fatigue, weakness and paralysis and paralysis, therefore hampering the movement of the body. So it is an autoimmune disorder. The antibodies that are present in our body itself may sometimes block the neurotransmitter acetylcholine from getting transferred into the postsynaptic neuromuscular junction. So that is the myasthenia gravis which where the characteristics are fatigue, weakness and paralysis of the various parts of the body. Next muscular dystrophy, paralysis of the muscles making them functionless. Second is muscular dystrophy which is called as the genetic disorder which is a genetic disorder. The order, the disorder is because of faulty genes or abnormal genes. So that is called as the genetic disorder. So which has come from the genes from the forefathers. The disease might have come from the forefathers which is called as muscular dystrophy. The characteristic is progressive degeneration of progressive degeneration of muscles. So day by day, day by day the muscles go on degenerating and they become functionless making the parts of the body immovable. So that is muscular dystrophy. Next is titani. So titani is <coughs> wild contractions of muscles, wild contractions of muscles due to 
hypocalcemia due to hypocalcemia so hypocalcemia means calcemia means less amount of calcium in the blood less amount of or low levels of calcium in the blood you call it as hypocalcemia and titani is wild contraction of the muscles leading to spasms mai sidita ide anta karitare mai kai nuvu antar so the wild contractions of the muscles due to hypocalcemia that is low calcium levels in the blood next is arthritis so these three are called as the disorders of the skeletal system myasthenia gravis muscular dystrophy and titani are the three disorders related with the muscular system so my myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disorder wherein the neurotransmitter acetylcholine is blocked from getting transferred into the postsynaptic neuromuscular junction and the muscular dystrophy is the genetic disorder which has come to uh, come through the forefathers where it lead due to faulty genes or the abnormal genes leading to progressive degeneration of the muscle fibers and titani is due to hypocalcemia the there is wide contractions of the muscles or spasms of the muscles so these are the three disorders of the muscular system now coming to arthritis commonly it is called as joint pain commonly it is called as the joint pain so in between the joints there is cartilage in between the bones at the at the point of joints there are cartilage so this cartilage uh, keeps the two bones away at the at the point of the joint the cartilage keeps the two bones little bit away but when there is degeneration of this cartilage when there is degeneration of this cartilage the two bones touch each other causing severe pain which is called as the arthritis or the joint pain or it is called as the joint pain next is osteoporosis so this is an age related age related disorder so this is because of thinning of bone mass thinning of bone mass or degeneration of the bone mass so what happens is when the person gets older and older there is deficiency of some of the elements in the body like phosphate or uh, phosphates and the phosphates are uh, absorbed from these bones whenever they are required by the body they are absorbed by these bones thereby making the uh, making the bones very thin or lose the mass of bone bone mass is decreased and that condition is called as osteoporosis and this may lead to fractures also may lead to fractures due to small injuries so sometimes even the low estrogen levels also causes osteoporosis low estrogen level in female low estrogen estrogen is a hormone low estrogen in females also leads leads to osteoporosis so arthritis is joint pain osteoporosis is degeneration of the bone mass or thinning of the bone mass in which, which is an age related disorder and gout finally so this gout there is joint pain due to accumulation of this is accumulation of uric acid due to accumulation of uric acid gout is caused due to accumulation of uric acid so pain in the joints because of accumulation of the uric acid crystals so that is gout so myasthenia gravis muscular dystrophy and titani or disorders of the muscular system and arthritis osteoporosis and gout or something which is related with the bones or the skeletal disorders of the skeletal system 
So six disorders, all of them very important from exam point of view. Each of them may be asked for two marks or just to mention the disorders for three marks also they may be asked in the board exams. And for NEET, each and every word, each and every syllable and each and every uh, disorder is very important related to your competitive exams. So that is about the skeletal system. So we have concluded studying the skeletal system. In that we studied the axial system, axial skeleton. We studied the appendicular system, uh, uh, appendicular uh, skeletal system. Then we studied the bones of the uh, limbs and uh, finally we studied the various girdles, the pectoral girdle and the pelvic girdle. We studied joints, types of joints and types of synovial joints. So finally making up, counting all the bones together, counting all the bones together to make up the sum to 206. So the skull which can comprises of cranial bones. So they are eight in number, facial bones which we studied which are 14 in number. So vertebral column, 26 bones. Then this sternum, one bone, then the ribs, 12 pairs which means 24, right? Then arms, uh, the limbs, each limb constitutes of 30 bones and totally there are 4 limbs therefore it will be 120 bones and pectoral girdle pectoral girdle one scapula and one clavicle so there are two halves so two clavicle and two scapula which counts to four bones and pelvic girdle so which consists of two coxa bone two and one hyoid bone and six ear ossicles ear ossicles which is six now we shall make a final count of all the bones eight plus four is twelve twelve plus six is eighteen nineteen 19 plus 4 is 23, 23 plus 4 is 27, 27 plus 2 is 29, 29 plus 1 is 30, 30 plus 6 is 36. So 3 plus 1, 4. Three plus one four, four plus two six, six plus two eight, eight plus two ten, zero and one carry, one plus one is two. So total of two not six bones in the human skeletal system. So that is about the bones of the human skeleton and thereby we will conclude this video. Thank you.